uh, some human development here. So we have the sun hitting these targets and then a, a, a certain amount of light being absorbed by the target and a, a certain amount being reflected based on what type of target that is. So that means that we can we can, based on the, uh, that spectral signature, based on the amount of light reflected and the light, amount of light absorbed and the channels, the electromagnetic spectrum here, uh, from visible to near infrared to uh, shortwave infrared, um, based on the characteristics of, of the signature, um, characteristics, uh, signature that is characteristic to the, length, uh, to the type of um, length cover that we are uh, sensing, we can separate those. So that's that's basically how uh, satellite images get uh, classified into uh, different types of lead cover. Uh, this is a product that Town already used, showed you, a uh, global forest change. Uh, this shows, uh, has uh, compiled data about, 10, uh, about 15 years of data from 2000 to 2014. And what it shows is, as it says here, uh, global uh, forest loss. Um, there is a paper associated with this with this product. This is an online uh, resource that you can use if you are interested in the methods. Um, definitely read this paper. The good thing about this the source is that you can uh, use it online. You can zoom down to the area, the uh, I don't know, Bale Mountain. This is 30 meter resolution, as Town mentioned. So it has high uh, high spatial resolution that. Um, you know, is quite useful when we work at regional and, and smaller scale. So, uh, use, I, I think it's a useful product, um, and I use just a general view of uh, global forest uh, loss, um, just a, a general map, but you can zoom in uh, further. Any questions so far? Everybody's still awake, still paying attention? Okay, so ca causes of deforestation, I'm sure you're very familiar with, with uh, these, um, one, one that is more and more increasingly uh, concerning is uh, clearing uh, forests for um, these uh, plants that are used to produce biofuels. This makes us, especially the conservation-oriented folks, uh, makes us feel the, the biofuels make us feel good. But if the biofuels are produced through uh, clearing of the land, that should make us feel really bad because we are, of course, losing uh, losing important forest cover and losing uh, species uh, with that. So, uh, I would say this this is a highly concerning issue related to uh, uh, deforestation, uh, forest cover uh, loss, currently. Um, now, what do we do uh, to um, address the forest cover loss and deforestation? Uh, what kind of mitigation plans do we have, or mitigation options we have? <coughs> One of them is afforestation. So let's let's just plant forests, let's plant trees, and have uh, forests go grow back. This can be a bad situation if we create monocultures, if we use non-native species, and we generate low biodiversity. And I remember, I recall some of you mentioning the eucalyptus as a really bad management strategy, introducing it to. I've seen it in Ecuador, uh, I don't know, you've probably seen it in, in your country, I don't know. Uh, a very, very, um, I would say terrible idea. So with afforestation, if we create monocultures, non-native species, low biodiversity, we are, it's bad for, for, one, uh, for the conservation purpose. But if we think about it in terms of carbon sequestration, more timber, um, than the natural, more in terms of high productivity than natural forests produce or uh, give us, then it's a good thing. Uh, and as long as we use native species, afforestation should be good. So this, um, this debate about afforestation using low diversity of trees um, relies a lot on this carbon sequestration. At least we are mitigating for climate change by, by, by uh, planting uh, trees and, and trying to increase the forest cover, uh, recover some of the forest cover that was lost. But I would say uh, use of native species, of course, I think you will agree, <laughs> use of native species it, is better for, for biodiversity. Okay, yes. 
This one? Yeah. This one? Yeah. The second bullet from the station bullet. This? Eucalyptus populus? Yeah, it's uh, Populus, the genus. Uh, are you familiar with it? It is used for, for um, it's a fast growing tree. Uh, tree, well, I guess the genus would be po uh, Populus. I don't know what kind of, which particular species are used, but it's a fast growing uh, tree, and yes, it is used for, to uh, regenerate forest cover in, in some areas. Most often, not native to that <laughs> particular area, yes. But these are fast growing trees, so they are used in, uh, in, in these, sometimes in uh, some of these uh, afforestation projects. Okay, anything else here? Okay, uh, so what are some, some effects of forest loss? Um, we already talked about this. Um, the fragmentation and edge effect, maybe we didn't really address them, or maybe, I guess we talked about edge effect uh, recently. It's not just the loss of forest cover, it's also uh, separating, uh, fragmenting the landscape, uh, creating uh, uh, distinct populations of whatever um, you know individuals we are concerned with, and if if the dispersal abilities of those uh, individuals is not um, adequate to um, um, the uh, landscape we are creating, the fragmentation we are creating, then we are concerned with uh, isolation uh, or yeah, I guess isolation in patches, and then edge effect. We talked about that recently. Okay, with logging, other issues we have is uh, building of roads, and once we have a, a new road um, open in a, a, a forest, what sometimes we see is mining, so we create access and passage for other types of activities, uh, mining, agriculture, and, and human settlement. So it's not just the removal, even if it is selective removal of uh, trees, selective logging, uh, one concern is that that with opening of uh, roads for logging, we uh, eventually see other activities uh, occurring in that region. Yes, then. Yeah. Another major effect would be changing species composition. Definitely, yes. Because, like, for example, to the urban land, mm -hmm. the, you guys emphasize that you know, for birds, but in particular, there are some bird species that are special species. So, maybe for a specialist. So, if there's any disturbance, kind of the change in the more general species in the mm -hmm. So, like where we went to, they said, any time pass, like the lake level species seems to have maybe 50 species come out. Mm -hmm. And now they have less, maybe 20 of these species. So, maybe the species that are specialists are not coming back anymore. Yes. Because of the human. Yes. I, I agree. Yeah. It's not just uh, isolating uh, patches, um, losing forest cover, it's also uh, changing those communities. We see changes, uh, changes in terms of uh, species composition. Yeah, that's that's a, a good point. Anything else? Here? Okay. Uh, what else did I want to do? Oh, and I also wanted to mention, going back to ecosystem services, uh, this is some, um, this is one way to talk about, about forest cover loss, deforestation, uh, make reference to ecosystem services that are affected, are um, lost with uh, deforestation. So we have soil erosion followed by floods, and then just generally uh, loss of carbon sinks Basically, that regulating, remember, uh, one type of ecosystem ser service is regulating uh, ecosystem services, which has to do with uh, carbon uh, sequestration. So, with uh, forest loss, we see these uh, reduction, uh, reduction in these ecosystem uh, uh, services. Okay, now, uh, forest fires. Uh, is another topic of, uh, at least in the US, a, top a topic of debate. Um, and that is because we know uh, fires, or we are, I think, pretty sure by now, that fires did and do occur naturally. 
but with uh, our activities, we have uh, perturbed and changed that, that fire regime. Um, so the more houses we build in areas that are naturally uh, forested, the less likely we are to allow a natural fire to uh, sweep through that region because we are now concerned with the welfare uh, or of uh, settlements and humans living in there. So we have the fire suppression issue. And then um, as a side effect of logging, what we see is that uh, debris, uh, the result of uh, logging small branches, leaves, whatnot, those accumulate and those uh, that debris becomes fuel for fires and the fires are actually uh, stronger because stronger, sorry, because we have accumulation of that debris due to uh, logging. Um, this type of uh, logging also produces oh, not this type logging also produces drier forests because we have um, less forest cover. Uh, we have more e evaporation occurring, and so we have drier in general drier forests, which means drier forests will uh, be more likely to be. Uh, the site of, uh, of uh, natural uh, fire or artificial uh, by accident started. Here's an example that, that uh, a study that looked at uh, the effect of log logging and accumulation of debris, correlation between that and fire intensity. So what we see here is closed, uh, comparison of closed forest versus uh, logged forest. Um, and this is in, I forgot to mention, this is in um, East Kalimantan here. This is the area that was uh, s uh, researched after a fire. So what we see is with closed forest, uh, we have a small percentage of uh, area affected by fire. With logged forest, we have a large percentage of uh, area affected by fire. And then a uh, number or percent of trees killed is also very different in the closed forest versus logged forest. So in a nutshell, what this study showed was that with logging, what we are doing is we are making the forests more prone to these fires that actually kill the trees. They don't, the trees do not, as in closed forest, uh, where they survive uh, better, we have, uh, we have a higher loss of higher loss of forest cover because the forest does burn down and then higher uh, percent of percentage of trees uh, killed with these, um, with these fires. So even though um, we are trying to make use of resources, we need to, uh, I guess we need to, we do need to log forests. Uh, even careful logging does can can have uh, unfortunately negative effects with these types of fires. This was an, an uh, unusually uh, large fire, uh, unusual year uh, in terms of El Nino La Nina um, pattern. So the conditions were perfect for for a, a, a disaster uh, type of fire. Okay, so uh, one. Besides losing uh, biodiversity and uh, yeah, with the forest cover, um, uh, um, the problem with uh, fire uh, is also that uh, as we, uh, we, as the forests burn, we release the CO2, we release the carbon dioxide uh, in the atmosphere. What does, what this release of carbon dioxide through, dioxide through fires, what this generates is more diox uh, carbon dioxide uh, that will contribute to uh, global warming. Global warming does generate uh, hotter, drier weather that expands the fire season, and I think you know where I'm going. This is a cyclic, uh, or this is a highly interconnected, these processes are highly interconnected and affecting each other. So we have fires, we have release of CO2, we have uh, CO2 contributing to global warming, and then we have global warming generating drier, um, uh, drier and hotter